Today we're going to do a demo of the graded Jupyter Notebook X block. And this is an X block that uses the NB grader system as a backend to grade and sync the uh, student results into the edX grading system. So as a quick overview of how this thing works, it's basically that the instructor uses a local installation of Jupyter and NB grader, and then they create a source notebook. They upload that notebook and then the students can download the student version of that notebook. Once they have it, they use their own local installation again of Jupyter Notebooks to uh, complete the notebook and then they'll re-upload it. And once it's re-uploaded into the X-Block, it will run in a Docker container and then the results will be aggregated, saved, and then displayed to the student. So let's go ahead and add one of these and take a look at it. So first we'll add our graded Jupyter Notebook. And then we've got a few sections here, the instructor section, everything in the gray at the top. And then this is the student section down below. So we'll quickly go over kind of each of these sections. So the Python virtual environment section. So this is that each course has its own virtual environment and that's shared across the specific course. So that you, this allows you to up, upload a requirements.txt file that defines what packages will be used within the student notebooks. So you don't need to add NB grader or Jupyter or IPy kernel or anything like that. You just need to add anything that will actually be used or imported within the student notebooks and or the instructor notebook because um, they may use uh, various packages for testing. So the next thing we can look at is the instructor upload section here. So this is where this instructor will actually upload the source notebook itself. And then they'll be able to see various uh, information about the notebook. So we'll go ahead and start by just peeking over here at a source notebook in NB Grader. And what will be displayed to the student is the section names um, over here and their point values. So something that's useful is to, in the auto-graded tests area, name the cell ID something that, me that is meaningful to the student. So in this case, I called it part A, and we're testing the squares function, so we'll call it part A squares. You could also add small headers in and then uh, link basically the names of these so it's very clear to the student which sections are worth points and what's being tested. Um, in this case, you'll notice I'm using the nose tool just to, uh, as an example of having something that's imported um, in within the uh, instructor notebook section. And these can be hidden tests as well, just like they can with regular NB grader. This does not support manually graded tests. So we only want to use auto graded tests and answers, never the manual graded tests. So once this had been filled out, you'd save it. And then we'd come back over to our X block and we would upload it. So we'll grab this out of the source and then we'll say upload. And so now we'll say, okay, it's, it's successfully uploaded. And here's a download link that the instructor can use to download this uh, problem. And then it also grabs the max score that's available and when this was uploaded. So now let's go ahead and publish this and we'll run over here and take a look at what this would look like from the student side. So right now we don't really have any information filled out. We'll go back and do that. But generally the student would say, download their student notebook and then they would fill it out in their local installation. So if we come back over, we can take a little peek at one that's got a few answers filled out. I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to solve these in front of everyone. Um, so this it just defines one of the functions and then the student would come in and run their notebook as normal and uh, say file and save and checkpoint once they're happy with it. And then they would also come over and upload their solution. So we'll grab the one where five points have been completed and we'll upload that. So now it's running it in a Docker container on the edX server. And then now we get our results shown below. So this is what I meant by defining a cell name 
that is appropriate to help the student understand where they missed uh, points or where they got them correct or incorrect. So we can see that the first two sections, they got all the points. And then in the second two, they have not got any points yet. And so those are ones that are down here um, in this section, which they had not implemented. Right here. <clears throat> so we can also go back and explore uh, the progress and see that the student now has got 83% on that particular problem. And in our case, we've allowed them to upload this as many times as they want. So let's explore some of the options here in the edit context. So this is the display name of the notebook. It's what the students will see or the title. These are some additional instructions. That the student would see. Allowed submissions, if you leave it at zero, then we'll say, yep, you can only, or you can do it infinity times or any number of submissions, or you can set it to a specific number. The network allowed uh, isolates the Docker container from the outside network. So I would suggest leaving this as false for now, um, because don't forget that Jupyter Notebooks do allow arbitrary execution of code. And we have done our best to isolate this within a Docker container. However, if you do allow network access, then they would be able to potentially use different libraries and things like that to make requests from the server. So the cell timeout is defaulted at 15 seconds. And that just means that if any cell in the notebook takes more than 15 seconds to execute, it's gonna throw an exception. So that way we don't tie up resources for an infinite amount of time. Whether we allow the graded notebook to be downloaded, you can set that to true or false. And we'll show an example of that. And then we also have this max file size. So this prevents uh, a student from uploading an arbitrarily large file and taking up a bunch of resources here as well. This defaults to something that's about 10 KB larger than whatever the instructor initially uploads, or you can also set this manually. So let's go ahead and set this NB grader to uh, allow it to be downloaded to true. Uh, we'll leave this as false still, and we'll say now that there's two submissions and we've made a couple other changes here. So let's publish those changes and we'll refresh our page. And here's our title as well as the instructions that existed. And you can see we now have two possible attempts. So let's first make an attempt where a student tries to use a package that doesn't exist. So in this particular notebook, I've tried to import the requests package. So we can see that it's still successfully uploaded, and uh, but there's an additional error that exists where it says there's no module named requests. And that was because the student tried to use the requests library, even though that does not actually exist within the virtual Python environment. And that's shown here in this first line. So we can also download this auto-graded notebook. And if we open that up, this is gonna show the results to the student um, basically what the auto graded results are in HTML form. And so we can see that there was no module found and that was that error that was indicated before. That same error can exist if, for instance, an instructor does not import the node or does not install nodes into the uh, virtual environment and then they try to use it within the graded cells as well. So it's it's very helpful for uh, instructors and students to make sure that, uh, or the, it's very important for the instructors to ensure that they have installed all the appropriate packages that will be used within the notebook. But unfortunately, when you do allow the student to view this, it will show any hidden tests that exist. So just be aware of that if you don't want them to, to be able to see those. So now we can also see that we have uh, run out of attempts here in order to, uh, so we can't upload anything else in our case. So uh, even if we had a quite intrepid learner here that was like, ah, you know what, I'm really smart. I can, I can re-enable these by just modifying the HTML, then we've made sure to, uh, to guard against that. So they, they could try it, but they'll still get, get denied in the end.
The last thing we can take a oops, sorry, take a look at here is the uh, Python environment again. So we can go ahead and let's try installing a <coughs> source here that actually has the requests package in it. So this one will take a little while to install um, because it does have to rebuild the entire Docker container when you update these requirements. So we'll go ahead and let that happen. Okay, now that that's done, we can see that we've also additionally installed the request package. So let's go ahead and allow an additional submission here so that we can go test this and we'll publish it. And then now when the student refreshes their site, they'll see that they have an additional option to upload another submission. And if we then go into that bad submission, oops, Now this one should pass because we now have the request package uh, within the Python environment. And there we go. So now everything's passing for that, for that particular student. And then we can also check and see that they still have their score here. And the last thing we'll take a quick look at is what happens if a student does try to upload a file that's too large. So we'll just set the file size to something very large. And I suppose we'll actually have to allow them to do more submissions too, won't we? We'll just allow them to do as many as they want. We'll just try to re-upload a file and then we'll see that we get an error. So I think that's the majority of it. And I hope you enjoyed the presentation.